As of now, we understand all the basic gates like inverter gate, inverter, AND gate in the OR gate. Now let us talk about the universal gate. Okay, so because NOR gate and the NAND gates are universal gate, why they are, we are calling them the uh, universal gate? I will tell you. Okay, so uh, let us try to see why we are calling them the universal gate and how this kind of logic can be made out. Okay, NOR gate is nothing but if I have an OR gate and if uh, I have connected one inverter after that, then that will become the NOR gate. Okay, so this is a simple structure. But inside this block, how this circuit looks like, I have a R gate having the two inputs. And if this R gate is passed through an inverter, then we can make it the NOR gate. So this is the equivalent circuit of the NOR gate. This bubble indicates the complement form. Okay. So the equivalent circuit of this uh, NOR gate with the help of basic gate can be made like this. Okay, so let us try to see how the truth table looks like. Okay, so see here what I'm doing here. A uh, x is equal to a plus b complement. So whatever the logic I was getting for the OR gate, here I need to complement the logic of uh, OR gate. Okay, so because this the NOR gate is nothing but R plus inverter. Okay, so what was the logic I was getting uh, for OR? that will be complemented here, okay? So, the, the, uh, so how the output will look like? Let us try to see. R plus inverter will give you the NOR logic. For R, zero plus zero was zero. So in, that, in, in this case, it will become one. For, NOR, uh, for R, zero plus one was one. Zero plus one, because I'm doing the here. Uh, if you see here, a plus B complement, zero plus one, that will give you one. And the complement of one is nothing but that, that will give you the zero. So this is how we can make it. So A plus zero, that will give you the zero, uh, like one plus zero. Zero plus one, that will also give you the zero. So this will also be zero. And one plus one, that will also give like uh, logic one. And if I complement it, that will become the zero. So the truth table for the NOR gate looks like this one. So this is simply the complemented, complemented, uh, complement version of the R gate. Okay. Uh, let us try to understand few things about this one. Okay. Uh, if suppose I have uh, provided any one of the input to always grounded, then what we are getting? We are getting here whatever the input to the second input is, whatever the input we have provided to the second input that is getting complemented. If I have provided zero, then the x will become one, and for one, this is become zero. What it means? It means that if I have a NOR gate and I have connected any one of the input to the grounded, in that case, that circuit will act as an inverter logic. Okay, so let us try to see how we can make the NOR gate as an inverter. So let us try to make the diagram. I have connected to the ground and I am providing the input something like this. So I will receive the output opposite to the input. So this is how the output will look like. So whatever the A here I have, like whatever the input I have, output will be complemented x is equal to a complement okay yeah in this case whatever i have considered b complement okay so anything you can do suppose this is the b this is the input b so x will be b complement so it will act as a inverter okay. similarly let us assume i am providing the logic high to any one of the input Okay, so whatever the input I have provided, it does not matter. Output is always zero. So it is inhabiting to logic low. So suppose I have made a, a circuit like this. And this is connected to the VDD and whatever the input I am providing, it does not matter. Always output is always 
जीरो और ग्राउंड <coughs> so this is inhabited to logic zero so this is how we can use it now the question is suppose i have to make a a, a nor gate with the help of some of the logic either cmos logic or the transistor logic or the diode logic <coughs> so let us try to see how we can make the circuit or or the nor circuit nor logic with the help of uh cmos based logic so i am directly making it uh, later on i will tell you how we, how to design all those things okay sir aapne get yeah or get bana diya hai sir aap ah sorry yeah here it will be yeah fine so we will have a buffer here okay so this is how the uh, circuit will look like now uh, i just told you suppose i want to make a nor gate with the help of uh, mosfets then how we can make it okay so i'm directly making it so that you will be able to uh, understand it how to design that part i will tell you later on okay so uh, designing part i'm not going through it but uh, directly let us try to see if i have to make uh, the nor gate based on the mosfet then uh, one very important thing is about the mosfet based circuit if the number of input if the number of input is equal to n then 2n mosfet required okay so if i am talking about a cmos based logic so for cmos based logic if the number of inputs are n then the 2 n number of mosfets are required suppose if i can recall the inverter one in inverter we had only one input so we required two transistor one is the p mos and the second one is the n mos similarly if i i want to design the nor gate so two input nor for two input nor gate i need four transistors okay but how for these four transistor will be connected uh, let us try to see that okay uh this is not in our scope but yes i'm just telling you to understand uh the logic uh, how it looks like from inside okay uh, yeah this is important you should understand the new things uh sorry so let us try to make the logic and we will try we will check it out whether the circuit is actually working as a nor gate or not okay so this is the simplest circuit for the uh, nor gate design based on the mosfet let us try to understand whether this circuit is actually working as a nor gate or not okay so let us consider the first case okay if i am considering the first case uh, a is equal to 0 and the b is equal to 0 okay if a is equal to let me write that number of transistors name like this is m1 this is m2 let us assume this is m3 and this is m4 can anyone tell me uh, if the a and b is equal to 0 then which of the transistors are on and which of the transistors are off So A and B on. A and B uh, are at two places. M one, M two will be in on state, or M three, M four will be in on state. Which of the transistor will be in on state? M one, M two. M one and M two will be in on state because see, I know that if I am providing logic low to the PMOS transistors, yeah, upper two one, M one and M two are the PMOS transistors. So if I am providing logic low to the PMOS transistor, those transistors are in the on state. okay so 
and 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 uh, vice versa for the p moisturizer so if a and b is equal to one in that case m1 and m2 will be in the on state and m3 and m4 will be in the off state okay so if the conditions is like that m1 and m2 is an on state what it means i will get direct path between vdd and the x and there is no path between x and the ground because m3 and m4 both are on so equivalent circuit will look like this one okay so this is how the equivalent circuit will look like this is the vdd and this is the x and uh, uh, in that case because there is no path between x and the ground so whatever the vdd is there that will be passed to the x means x will nothing but this is logic high okay so if a and b is equal to zero so the x will be logic high which we can see here now let us take the second case okay and similarly you can do it for other cases as well suppose if a is equal to zero and b is equal to one okay if a is equal to zero and b is equal to one then how the circuit will look like okay which of the transistor will mean on state and which of the off can anyone tell A is equal to zero and B is equal to one. In that case, M one M three M one and M three M one and M three is on. Recheck, please recheck. M one and M four M one and M four is on because see here, if A is equal to zero, so A I am providing zero here, one here. Zero here, one here. Okay, so P MOS transistor is on if logic zero is there. So M one is in on state. Okay, M two will be in the off state because logic one is provided. If we talk about M three, M three is on if logic one is there because this is opposite to the P MOS transistor. So this M three will be in the off state, and the M four is in the on state. Okay, so M3 and M4. So this will be the state of all the transistors. Now, if I will, I want to make the equivalent circuits. How how will it will look like? M1 is in on state, so it will have some on resistance of across M1. So this is the VDD. M2 is in the off state, so this will be open circuited because the MOSFET offer high resistance if it is in the off state. Now, if M3 is in off state, so there will be the open circuited here, and M4 is in the on state, so there will be some on resistance across M4 as well, and that is connected to the grounded. So in that case, what logic I will get at X, and which uh, how how it is transferred? See here. The zero. Yeah, because there is no path between VDD and the X because there is an open circuited over here, and if it is open circuited, then path will not be completed, so VDD will not be transferred at X. But there is a path between this R on of M4 and X will be connected to the ground. So I will get X is equal to logic zero, which you can see here. Okay. Similarly, you can validate for the other two cases. So this circuit is nothing but this circuit looks like a, a, a NOR gate based on the CMOS based logic. Okay. In gate examination, some of the questions. Can come like this. So this is really very important topic actually. That is why I am teaching you, even though you don't know the fundamental of MOSFET, but uh, and this is important. So some of the questions you can see in the gate examination related to the MOSFET based logic based logic circuit. So you, if you know the fundamental of activation and deactivation, you will be able to uh, design any of the logic, any of the function with based on the MOSFET. So this is how we can uh, design the NOR gate. With the help of uh, MOSFET. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, one thing we know, like in the NOR gate, we can call the NOR gate as a universal gate. Why we are calling it, the, it it as a universal gate? That question I will answer when I will design all the gates based on this NOR gate. Because see, why we are calling it universal? Because you can design all the gates, all other gates, whatever we have, with the help of these universal gates. That is why we are calling it the universal gate. So NOR gate and the NAND gate, these two gates are the universal one. With the help of those, these two gates, you can design all other gates. But how to design that one? 
I will tell you in more detail later on. So this is how the NOR gate works. Now let us talk about how the NAND gate. Yeah, NAND gate is also one of the universal gate. Okay. So let us try to see how this NAND gate works and how this looks like. Okay. Basically, the NAND gate symbol uh, is like this: end plus inverter. This is nothing but this is the end. Uh, this is the NAND one. So yeah, because these all are the same. So I'm just quick, quickly going through without wasting time. Okay. So if you see here, I have a uh, four possible combinations for A and B. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And we know that if I have an end gate, so for end gate, it is A dot B, logical uh, multiplication. So in that case, if both are 1, then it will be high. Okay. So we know that for NAND gate, uh, if both A and B are 1, then the output is high, otherwise it is 0. So for end gate, I was getting 0, 0, 0, and 1. And because if I'm talking about a NAND gate, this will be the complementary of this one. So this will become one, this will become one, this will become one, this will become zero. So this is the two table for the uh, NAND gate. So the two table for NAND gate is the opposite to the AND gate. Okay. Now, if I have to make something, some sum of the logic, uh, or, or let us try to see how we can inhabit it. Okay. So let us try to check those combinations. Suppose I have a NAND gate. Yeah, so see here. Suppose I have a, I'm providing any one of the input to logic zero and I'm changing the input to logic uh, zero and one to the next input. So even though there is some change in the input, I will get always logic high. What it means? It means that if I have a NAND gate and in the NAND gate, if I have connected one of the input to the grounded, and if there is some change in the input or the second input, it does not matter. I will always get logic one or VDD. What it means, it is inhabited to high. Okay, so this logic is this circuit is inhabit to logic high. Now, if you see the second case, the second case could be like if I'm providing logic one to any one of the input and now try to see whatever the input I have that is going to be complement. If I'm providing zero, then the X is one. And if I'm providing one, then X becomes zero. So it becomes the inverter. <coughs> so <coughs> we can make the inverter circuit based on the NAND gate as well. So for that purpose, what I have to do, I have to simply uh, connect one of the input to the VDD and whatever the input I'm providing here, that is the uh, inverted, that will be inverted. So if logic low is at the input side, it will be high, low, high, low, and so on. So this will act as a inverter. So this is how we can utilize it. Now the question is, Suppose if I want to make this NAND gate with the help of CMOS based logic, then what we can do? If we can uh, recall the previous case, uh, uh, NOR case. In the NOR case, what we did, yeah, let me go back to that side. If you see here, in the NOR case, what I did, I provided the two PMOS transistors are in the series, which are in between VDD and ground, and two NMOS transistors are in parallel which are connected between the ground and the output. Okay. If we try to change it, like if I can make the parallel combination in the upper side and the series combination in lower side, then this will be opposite. So how it will look like, let us try to see that. Okay. So let us, let us see. Uh, If I have a two PMOS transistors in a parallel, yeah, one more thing, one question may come from your side, like why we are always keeping the PMOS transistor to the upper side, not to the lower side. So there is a problem with the, uh, if you will keep the PMOS transistor in the lower side, there will be some uh, drop, voltage drop. Okay. So this thing not uh, is not in our scope. So I'm not going through it, but uh, you can go through some of the lectures and 
I will tell you from where you can access it. Okay, so you will be able to understand why we are keeping always the PMOS transistor in the upper side. So let us assume I have a structure something like this A, B, A, and B. And uh, here I am taking the <coughs> output X. Okay, and uh, I have transistor M1, M2, M3, and M4. Uh, can anyone check for any of the combination? Let us try to check for combination A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0. Okay, A is equal to 1 and b is equal to zero what will happen can anyone tell me m2 m3 m2 and m3 will be in the honest state right yes yes so m2 and m3 is in honest state so how the circuit will look like let us try to see m2 and m3 is in the honest state so here I have uh, M1 is in the on state, off state. So this is off. This is on. This is M3 is in the on state. And this is in the off state. So equivalent circuit will look like this one. So what will be the output? What will be the output? Can anyone comment? VDD. VDD. Perfect. Because there is a path between the VDD and the X. Okay, so X will be transferred through this R on of M2 and X will be at logic one. But because there is no path, even though one of the transistor is in on state, M3 is in the on state, we will not get the path between X and the ground. Okay, so this will be in the off state. Similarly, if you see the second case, A is equal to zero and B is equal to one. So this will be in off st on state, this will become off and this is on and this will be off. So uh, accordingly, you can manage the thing. So uh, I'm just giving the homework, just uh, uh, try to calculate or uh, find the equivalent model, resistance model for all other combinations as well. So how the actually circuit will look like, you can understand uh, the concept of this circuit. Okay. So this is how the NAND gate looks like. Okay. Is there any doubt at any place? You can ask the questions. Otherwise, we can move ahead with the next kind of logic gates. Okay. So this is how the NAND gate works. Now, let us talk about some exclusive kind of gates. Okay, how, how those exclusive gates works. So we have a two exclusive gate. One is the uh, XOR gate and the second one is XNOR gate. The symbol of XOR gate is like this, A and B. Uh, and here we have a two curves uh, instead of like just, just it, it's like an R gate, but uh, this is for some decision making capability. Okay, so how we can use it? So output is nothing but this is the A. So for R, we know that for R, we need to keep A plus B. And uh, uh, this is a simple expression for R. But if I'm talking about XR, then I need to put some bubble across this plus symbol. What does it mean? It means that. If you expand this expression, uh, XR expression, this expression indicates <coughs> X is equal to A bar B plus A B bar. So this is the expression for X. And if we expand this one, this becomes like A bar B plus A B bar. Okay. So this is a simple expression for XOR gate, if you have a plus symbol with the circle, it indicates whatever the variables you have, you have to expand it like this. A bar B plus A B bar, where A bar means complement of A, B bar means complement of B. Okay. So after combine all these things, you will get the expression something like that. So the expression for XOR gate is A bar B plus A B bar. Now let us try to make the truth table of this circuit. Okay. How we can. So how table of this circuit? Uh, let us try to see it. Okay. So are you able to see the uh, screen now? 
yes uh, sir something i'm writing you can see it okay yeah. okay fine so see here let us try to uh, find the truth table of this xor gate okay so this is not just like a, a, a or gate okay so there is some chain if a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 0 so how this expression will look like a bar like a bar means whatever the a i need to keep the complement of it. so a bar is 1 into b is 0 so 1 into 0 plus a a is nothing but a is 0 here so 0 and b bar means b is 0 so b complement is 1 so 1 into 0 will give you the 0 plus 0 into 1 that will give you the 0 and 0 plus 0 that will give you the 0 so output will become 0 okay can anyone uh, calculate for other cases just like this what will be for 0 1 and 1 0 and 1 1 so 1 1 0 1 1 and 0 yes so uh, just you have to put uh, on this formula whatever we have expanded version of this formula and uh, you can get the value of x so we are getting this x is equal to 0 1 1 0 now let us try to summarize it okay how we can summarize this one if you see here in this case the number of ones are are odd in this case number of ones are odd and in this case number of ones are even so the output is high if you see here these two cases output is high if the number of ones are even uh, 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 num number of ones are odd output is high or output is one if the number of one is odd so can anyone tell which kind of log logic it was can you recall the parity bits what was the parity bit so peri parity bit was working like this only even parity or parity we understand like if i can recall the odd parity odd parity was if number of uh, number of ones was odd then i need to provide the parity bit <coughs> is equal to zero but if we talk about the even parity so if the number of ones are even uh, number of ones are even then i have to provide zero or or, or uh, vice versa so basically XOR and XOR, XNOR gates are utilized to generate the parity bit. Okay. So if you can recall, suppose I had, uh, uh, if you can recall the parity bit, how it was working. Let us try to see here. Suppose I have a, a four bit data. Okay. Four bit data, which is the D3, D2, D1, and D0. And I want to generate the parity bit of this one. So what I need to do? I need to simply like see here. This D0, D3, uh, uh, D3, D2, D1, and G D0 will be transferred. And if I have to make, yeah, this is nothing but this is the data bit. Okay, so this is the data bit. And at the uh, at the LSP of this data bit, I need I need to add one parity bit as well. If I want to make the parity bit, so what I need to do, I simply, I will simply XOR these logics, whatever I have. I will simply XOR all these logics and whatever the bit I am getting, this is nothing but this is the parity bit. Okay, so the one of the simplest example of this XR is to generate the parity bit. So here we have a data bit and then at the LSB we will get the parity bit based on that. Okay, so this is how it is important, how we can generate the parity bit based on Yeah, this is one of the application of XR. Bit. Okay, similarly, if you have to make the odd parity uh, or the or other kind of parity so you can use a different kind of uh, xor gate or either you can use the xnor gate if you have to use the uh, odd parity or other thing so the simply like xor gate and xnor gate are basically utilized to generate the parity bit and uh, there are some other applications as well so but yeah this is the simplest application which we have already studied so this is how we can generate the parity bit now let us try to understand 
how uh, we can make a different different possibilities or uh, how we can inhibit this logic okay so let us try to see it suppose i have a xor gate okay which is like this okay. and if i yeah see here if a i have connected a to the ground gate so whatever the input i have this is the same whatever i am receiving at the output what it means this will act as a buffer okay this is transferring the same logic whatever i have so if any of the input is connected to the ground gate and if i have an input which is changing from 0 1 0 1 something like this the output is nothing but this is 0 1 0 1 something like this okay so i will get it like this will act as a enable circuit enable signal okay and this will be nothing but buffer buffer circuit or simply it will transfer the same transfer the input Similarly, if you see the second case, in the second case, like if I have provided the logic high to that one, and see here, if I have provided logic high to any of the input, and whatever the input I have, that is going to be give, uh, the output is going to be inverted. So I will get, I will, cons I, the, the logic will act as a inverter circuit. So if I have the input, something like this, output will be inverted version of this one okay so this will act as a inverter so the lower circuit yeah this one will be uh, enabled if high logic is there so i can consider this xor gate as a in the uh, uh, if the enable signal is high okay this let me repeat again what I'm saying. This XOR gate will act as an inverter if the enable signal is high. And if the enable signal is low, in that case, the circuit will act as a buffer. So the same circuit can be considered as an inverter or as a buffer based on what is the status of enable signal. Okay. So E is equal to zero, then buffer. And if E is equal to one, then inverter okay so this is what you should understand so the same thing yeah please but can you explain this enable part yeah enable part enable part means simply see uh because i am providing the input to any of the one of the input and one of the signal i have connected either to the logic zero or logic one so see here if i have connected one of the input to logic zero so this XOR gate will act as a buffer circuit. So if I have to make, I have to enable this XOR gate as a buffer, I need to provide logic zero. So this circuit will act as a buffer if enable signal is low. Now, if you see the lower circuit, lower one, enable signal is nothing but that is connected to the <coughs> high one, okay? So if the enable signal is high or any one of the input is high, whatever the input I will provide, that is going to be complemented. Okay, so the inverter that is going to be inverted. So if I have to consider this circuit as an inverter, the enable signal must be connected to logic high. So that is why I'm saying one of the input can be considered as an enable and based on the status of that enable signal, we can decide whether this will act as a buffer or it will act as an inverter. You got the thing? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is how the XR circuit or XR logic works. So yeah, so this is the importance of XR logic. The last kind of logic is the XNOR one. So quickly, let us try to finish this as well. So because you know the XR one, so I think I don't need to put too much of stress on that. Uh, you will be able to, yeah, this is the, uh, if I add one inverter after the XR gate, then the XNOR will get will be, yeah, I have to put one inverter. And uh, this symbol indicates X here, A plus P indicates, like see here, what I'm doing, x is equal to, if you can recall the xor function it was a bar b plus a b bar this was the expression for xor but i need to complement it okay so this will be the expression for the x nor one okay so the actual expression will be something like this okay so uh, 
if you can try to write the truth table yeah truth table will be opposite if you see the xnor uh, xor gate it was 0110 so here it will become 1001 yeah because because i am just inverting here so i don't need to put too much of stress you you know how we can do that so the output will be like 1001 now let us quickly go through the uh, the logic implementation suppose i have a xnor gate okay and i have connected one of the input to the grounded and i am providing the input to something like some changing input like this so yeah here i have provided logic 0 okay and if you see if i have provided logic 0 whatever the input i have uh, that is going to be inverted or that is going to be complemented so for 0 it is giving 1 and for 1 it is giving 0 so this will act as a inverter so this will be opposite to the x xor one right so this, there is no special case so here it will act as a inverter and similarly if you see the second case the second case was something like if we have a xnor gate and one of the input is connected to the vdd then uh, uh, i i can uh, if after keeping all this input as a uh, yeah if i have the input something like this in that case it will act as a like buffer so the output will be same as that one so it will be buffer okay uh, explanation is uh, very easy that you can do it just just, just like what we did for the uh, xor gate okay uh, a basic gate like just we we talked about what is inverter what is end gate what is or gate and if we talk about the special kind of special like uh, the universal gate the universal gates are like end gate and or gate Uh, and why we are calling these gates as universal gate i just told you because the universal gates are, are the gates by which we can design all other gates with the help of universal gate you can design what if, uh, all other gates whatever we have discussed like uh, if i have the end gate so based on or with the help of end gate you can design inverter you can design or gate nand gate uh, or gates uh, and all other kind of whatever we discussed like we can design all those things similarly for the nor kind of uh, gates okay so let us try to discuss how we can design the other gate with the help of the universal gates okay first universal gate is like let us consider the nor gate suppose i have a nor gate and we know that uh, the 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 truth table for the nor gate is something like suppose i have a let me make some table okay so suppose i have a, a nor gate so if a and b are two inputs and x is the output or y is the output so we can have a four possible combinations 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 okay and out of these four possible combinations uh, uh, the output is high if both the inputs are one in for other conditions this is zero so this is the truth table whatever we have discussed <coughs> before okay now if we clearly if you closely observe this truth table of nor gate what we can observe here if i can tie both the inputs like if both the inputs are same like uh, here we have a two possible combination one combination is this where we have both the inputs are same and here i have one more combination which is one one where i have both the inputs at the same potential or at the same logic if you see this one means if i connect both the input at the same logic in that case this nor gate is giving the opposite logic whatever i have at the input side similarly if you see if i have both the inputs one one i am getting zero okay what does it mean it means that if i have a nor gate and if i try to connect both the input and if i am providing the input here then output yeah instead of v input let me write some value let us if i have a input a so x is nothing but this is the a complement okay so this is how we can design the inverter okay so this this is uh, the way how we can so simple uh, if i have to replace the why we we need this kind of uh, uh, structure sometimes in any of the system we need only nor structure to design 
complete logic. In that case, I have to replace each and every other gate with the normal. Okay, and <coughs> and, uh, and and we need to replace it like this. So I will explain you in more detail how it can be done. So please wait and watch. I will tell you in more detail. So this is a simple structure how the inverter can be made with the help of NOR gate. Now let us try to discuss something different. Okay. So I, I'm removing the two table. We know like A and B or something like that. And what is the output? We can get it like this. Okay. Now suppose uh, I want to make a R gate. Can anyone comment? What should be the structure if I want to get, make? Uh, so this is simply how the NOR gate looks like. <coughs> Suppose I, I want to make a R gate, then how it could be done? Can anyone tell me? So placing this in front of a NOR gate. Okay. So if I have a NOR gate, and then uh, uh, just after that, if I can, can I, I can use this structure which is NOR gate then it will act as a R gate, right? Perfect. This is absolutely correct. So if I have to make the uh, NOR gate, so here I, uh, R gate, so here I have a NOR structure having two input, let's resume, we have an input A and B, okay? And uh, we are getting some output. So, and here, what the expression will be like simply NOR kind of, okay? But if I want to make it R, so I have to replace it with the inverter, okay? I have to add one inverter after this one. Okay, and this inverter can be replaced with this kind of structure, whatever we discussed here. Okay, so if I try to replace these things, then the structure will be something like this. So here, this is the structure what I will get for the R gate. So here I have A, B, and X, which are the input and output. Similarly, if I have to make some other kind of logic gears. Okay, so let us let us try to make the uh, end gate or R gate, end gate or NAND gate. Okay, so let us try to see. Uh, I just see, uh, we just saw here, like if I have a uh, two inputs, okay, A and B, and I have output X, in that case for NOR, the two table is like one triple zero for the uh, all the possible combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So this is the truth table for NOR. Okay. Similarly, if we if we see what is the truth table for AND gate, let us I want to make the AND gate based on this uh, NOR gate. So can anyone tell me what is the truth table for NAND gate uh, AND gate? What is the truth table for AND gate? 0, 0, 0, triple zero 1. one. Triple zero one, perfect. So triple zero one is the truth table. So now let us try to see how we can make end gate with the help of NOR gate. Okay. So see here. Yeah. So I'm just removing this truth table. Yeah. Maybe I can use it later on. Suppose if I have a gate, something like this. So I have, if I have provided some input A, so if I have connected both the input, something like that, in that case, I will get A complement here. Okay. Similarly, if I have another input having B, and in this case, I will get B complement. Okay. And if I try to pass it through a, 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 a NOR gate again, then let us see what kind of output I'm going to observe here. Okay. So if you see here, yeah, I will tell you in more detail without doing 0, 1, 0, 1. Directly, you can minimize the expression with the help of some of the formula, which I will tell you in details later on. But for now, I need to validate this table or with uh, this circuit with the help of truth table, whatever I have here. Okay. So let us try to validate this circuit, whether it is acting as a AND gate or not. Okay. So suppose A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 0. In that case, I will get 1 and 1 here both. Okay. And if I'm getting, uh, if I'm providing one and one to the input of NOR gate, I will get logic zero. So this is same as whatever we are expecting here. So this condition is true. Now let us check the second condition. Suppose I have a zero and one. In that case, the B, uh, the output of this NAND gate will become zero. So zero and one, if I'm ORing, uh, uh, means NORing zero and one, in that case, I will get again output zero. 
and this zero is nothing but this is what what we are getting reflected over here similarly one zero is also true for this case now let us talk about the fourth case if i have a and b both one if a is equal to one then here i will get zero here i will get zero and zero and zero if both the inputs are low for the nor gate in that case output must be high output is high for the nor so here i will get output one and this is the same case whatever we have here so this circuit is acting as a and gate with the help of nor gate okay so, <coughs> so this is how we can make the uh, and gate now suppose i have to make the uh, nand gate so how we can make the nand gate what what we need to add what we need, we need to do can anyone tell me placing a knot in front of this end yes perfect so we need to add one more inverter just after this output and then that circuit will become the nand gate okay so this is how we can make the nand gate now let us talk about how we can yeah so uh, as of now we have total seven number of gates and i want to make six gates based on the nor okay so we designed not gate we designed or gate we designed end gate we also designed nand gate just i have to add one inverter just after this one so nand is also possible now let us try to see how we can design the uh, exclusive gates with the help of this nor gates okay so let us try to see if uh, i have to design the exclusive gates in that case what what kind of conditions are needed okay so let us try to check those things suppose i want to make the xor gate or xnor gate okay so what are the conditions for xnor gate let us try to see if i have a x north if i want to make if i want to design the x nor gate with the help of nor gate so what should be the table for the x nor x nor is simply the output is 1 0 0 1 and this is for x nor okay you, everyone knows like this is the uh, truth table for the x nor logic okay now let us try to see if i have to make the x nor logic with the help of nor gate then how it could be done okay so let us try to see yeah i'm not designing here later on i will tell you how to design yes uh, simply i just made this circuit and, and i am validating it uh, like this circuit is acting as an end gate but how i i got to know that i have to connect the inverter or the trans uh, or the gates in such a way in in this manner only to get this end gate so these things will be discussed in later later on when i will talk about the designing portion as of now we are doing the investigation we are we are checking we are validating the concept but later on we will design it so you don't need to remember this logic like okay if i have to make the nand gate so uh, i have to design a circuit in such a way no you don't need to remember this thing later on i will tell you suppose you have the expression for uh, end gate so with the help of nor gate you can simply design uh, design it without remembering the logic circuit okay so that that thing will be discussed later on okay similarly just like we did for the nand uh, and gate and the nand gate we can also do it for the uh, x nor gate okay so yeah i need to remove something here so this is for the x nor okay so uh, suppose i have a simple nor gate like this and if i try to connect to inver to to uh, nor gate in this uh, manner just like this what i just connected and the third uh, stage is something like this so this circuit will act as a x nor gate let us try to validate it how yeah again i am saying how i got, got got to know that the structure of this circuit will be like this only okay so that part will be discussed later on please hold on here i have to just validate it whether this circuit is acting as x nor or not later on we will check it out okay so suppose i have a uh, two inputs let us assume i have a two input a and b and one output which is x let us try to validate it suppose i have inputs something like uh, zero and zero so if a and b both are zero so the output of yeah let me write uh, n1 n2 n3 and n4 okay what will be the output of n1 one one perfect what is the output of n2 zero zero output of n3 zero zero output of n4 one one so for the first case if a and b is equal to zero we are getting 
the output one which is true in this case okay now let us try to validate the second case if zero and one is there okay if zero and one is there if b is equal to one okay so uh, what is the output of n1 zero zero perfect what is the output of n2 one one output of n3 zero zero output of n4 zero zero perfect so this is what the case we are getting for the second one similarly because a and b both are symmetrical so we can consider the third case uh, which is same like the second case now let us talk about the fourth case we have which if we have both a and b is equal to one okay so if both a and b is equal to one in that case what will be the output of n1 zero zero output of n2 zero zero output of n3 zero output of n4 one perfect so this is the output which we are, we were expecting for the fourth case if a and b is equal to one so now we can say this particular circuit whatever we just drawn here is acting as a xnor gate okay so this is how we can make it similarly if i have to make the uh, xor logic then i have to add one more in uh, one more inverter just after n4 okay and we will get it like uh, uh, it will act as a xor gate okay so this is how we can make all the logics which we can design with the help of nor gate so now i am giving you the homework just do this thing design all other gates with the help of nand gate okay? and try to validate whether all those logics are working as a gates or not okay so this is the homework please do it yeah with the same like a similar kind of concept will be uh, utilized to design the uh, gates with the help of nand gate because uh, nand and uh, uh nor are the inverse circuit so you can design it okay